Good morning. This is Seed of Word in Ministry, and I am Ometa. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we give you praise, glory, and honor. We thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for quiet places to hear from you. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you, Lord, that you are faithful to us. We give you praise. We thank you that this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for the things that you've given our hands to do for today, oh God. We ask, oh Lord, as we come before you, that you would look down upon the sick and afflicted, the poor and the needy, spiritually, financially, naturally, Lord God. That you would bring healing to those who are sick and wounded in emotions, in mentality, in their physical being. God, we give you praise. There is none like you, O oh God. You are faithful and just and full of mercy. And we give you praise in glory, precious name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Still waters for his namesake. Praise be to God who sets all things right and in order. <laughs> During my devotions, I always recite the 23rd Psalms. It is a comfort scripture for me. I believe most Christians have a comfort scripture or scriptures that bring peace to their mind as they're trying to get rid of the clutter and the distractions. As I am thinking on this chapter, the words, he maketh me lie down, in green pastures attracted me. But when I looked at the part that says, and he leads me beside still waters, my mind began to wonder, what is a still water? Or what is still waters? And I began my search. I started thinking about the man who wanted to get in the stirred water but David didn't use that term. He said, beside still waters. I discovered that still waters were a place, was a place of calmness and peace, a place where you could hear God in the midst of quietness. Still waters flow very calmly and create a place of no distraction. These waters are not shallow. They run deep. David was always being sought after. Trouble on every hand. Tugged by everything that could pull him away from knowing his God or standing up for his God. All the time. And he could always find refuge in his God. God had empowered him to kill a bear, a lion, a giant, and even get away from Saul. <laughs> David in his military life always remained faithful to his call. In 1 Samuel 16, it states, David behaved wisely in all his ways and the Lord was with him. Still waters is where God is, amen. These experiences created deep waters inside of David and were shown when David could render death, like the time he could have killed Saul, but instead he just cut a piece of his garment. And he said to himself, the words that he had learned, touch not my anointed and do it no harm. David knew his God. David saw God as a shepherd. David knew about shepherds because he was one himself, always in the field with his sheep, playing his harp and singing. David's courage and, and loyalty made him a great leader of the sheep. And that was important to David. He cared about his sheep. 
It was how David saw God dealt with him and reason why he penned, he is my shepherd. Shepherds care for their sheep. And sure enough, David felt God's care for him. David knew his sheep could be afraid, have all kinds of fear and anger, and even rage, even though they were timid and often needed guidance. David saw how God saw him as a sheep. There were times in David's life when God led him to quiet places. These times were when his soul was refreshed by the love and presence of God. Our Jesus, our shepherd, is living waters. He, does just, he doesn't just lead us to still waters. He is life-giving water. He is life-giving and thus soul-refreshing. David saw how God's protective consideration and regard for him was also based on what we thought about God. God cared about what David thought about him, and he cares about what we think about him. He is our shepherd. As we find that still place for ourselves, guess what? We can become the still waters for others, for his name's sake. And when we say the 23rd Psalms again, it will have a different meaning to us. The Lord, the Lord, the King, the Captain is my shepherd. The Son of God is my shepherd. And he maketh me lie down. You know, there are times when God makes us lie down in the green pastures. He sets us down. And then the word says that, and then he lead, takes, uh, leads us to be beside still waters, not rushing waters, but waters that are calm and we can see the calmness. You ever sit on the beach and just watch the water move slowly through? And it's very calming. That's what David felt when he was in the presence of God. He leads me in these still waters. And while I, we are there, he restores my soul. Why does my soul have to be restored? All of the things that are going on around me trouble my mind, often touch our spirits. But it is by those still waters that God can refresh us and remind us where we're going and who he is and who he is to us. And then he says, and yea, though I walk through the shadow of the valley of death, I will fear no evil. The shadow, well, you know, shadows are not tangible. David says the death is a shadow, amen. And he can walk through it without fear. He said that God gives him food in the presence of his enemies. Hallelujah, hallelujah as he restores his soul. Amen. He is refreshed again and again. Where? Beside the still waters. Amen. Do you know anyone in your life that's like that? That you know that they are going through something, but you cannot feel that in their presence. You may go to encourage them because of what you know. And before it's all over, they have encouraged you. David was like that. He was built up on all of the things that God had taken him through. And guess what? We are too. You know those experiences that God brought you through? The time when you had no food and somebody knocked on the door and brought food? I can remember times going through the church and having very little money and somebody shake my hand and put money in it. <laughs> Amen. God is our shepherd. Jesus came to show us the good shepherd and to show us how to care for his sheep. It was the important thing to him that we grasp that cognitive thought. And he said it to Peter, Peter, do you love me? Then feed my sheep. Amen. We who have 
been called into the ministry, God has not only empowered us, but given us the ability to love people right where they are, to hear the word of God for them, to ask God for a word for him, them, for his name's sake. Amen. God is good all the time. He is good. And we give him praise and glory and honor. We thank him for watching over us and keeping us safe. Amen. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for being our shepherd. We thank you for setting us aside. We thank you for empowering us with words of encouragement that you left in your love letter. Amen. Have you read his love letter today? The Bible is the love letter that he has left for us. Amen. So that we can see and feel his presence. God is good. Amen. Be safe. Amen. It's the beginning of the week. Keep your mind on the Lord. Do the things that God has called you to do. If you feel in your heart that is a calling, talk to your pastor about it. Talk to God about it again. And then get busy doing what he has called you to do. These are the last days. We're living in the last days. And this is kingdom time. God has raised up a kingdom within all of us. Amen. To demonstrate what that kingdom looks like. Love, joy, peace, happiness, long-suffering, temperance. Amen. He has placed within us so that we can do the things of the calling. Call somebody today and encourage them. Call somebody today and pray for them. Amen. Let them feel the still waters that's inside of you. In Jesus' name, amen. If this has helped you any, I ask that you pass it on or mention it to someone else. Amen. Still waters for his name's sake. Glory be to God.